Hello and welcome. For this one, I'm going to hunt down a full set of Fusion Guard. That seems to be the next most useful set after Primitive for DSTs and also buff beams. I am going to be using some Fusion DSTs for this one, but I'm going to crank my stats down a bit here. Not everyone's got 7,300 power on a Fusion DST. So for the set itself, the helmet's going to come from either Promenade, the Summit, or Glitter Helm, a Wave 25, clear any of those three maps, but we're going to head to Promenade. That's the easy one by a long shot. The chest will be Royal Gardens, the Gloves, Ancient Mines, and the Boots, Tornado Highlands. That's a weird one. I've got Wave 23 start builds for all four of these maps. With that out of the way, let's head to the Promenade to get ourselves a helmet. For anyone who started playing in 1.1, the Promenade might be unfamiliar territory, but this was the spot in 1.0 to farm level and gear. It was an easy run back then. It had 140 DU and you could steamroll it with some pretty low stats. Not the case these days, 110, still manageable though. All right, so we're going to start off with some fusion DSTs. I'm gonna pull out the DST here to place it. I'm gonna to get to the crystal. It's gonna turn red. I'm gonna back up a little bit and it'll turn green. And then I'm gonna go all the way over to the right. It'll turn red again, come back in. That's where I placed my first DST for our tower stack. And I'm gonna aim the right side of the aim here at that copter lane. You can see it in the middle of my screen there. I'm gonna point the right side of the aim at that copter lane. And then I'm gonna do one more DST right next to it with the same exact angle, same idea here, covering that copter lane with the right side. And then another DST here next to that one to complete that row. This one, I'm gonna aim, there's a torch between those two pillars right now to the right of the crystal. I'm gonna aim it so that the right side of the aim here touches that torch between those two pillars there. That is gonna ensure that that DST has coverage of this little bend right here that's coming around from that lane. And then I'm, we're gonna do one more DST, same deal on this one. That's the idea, there we go. And then two more DSTs. Now these are gonna cover the, uh, basically they're gonna cover this crystal right near us here. I'm gonna aim them across the left side of the aim. I'm gonna make sure it just covers that gap between those, there's two banisters over there. We're just gonna make sure that that gap is covered with the right, the left side of the aim for these two DSTs here. And the idea is to fan out coverage across the map. If you hit shift, you'll get a nice perspective of what's covered and what's not. So uh, pretty much the whole map is covered. All of the copter lanes are covered by at least two DSTs. There's a little strip here that's not covered, that's fine. And there's this chunk of the map back here that's also not covered because we're not going to get anything from back here. This used to be the chill spot back in the day, back in 1.0. That's where you could hang out in high towers. But we're all covered up here. I am going to drop a 4DU buff beam to buff up all of these towers too. And we're going to get some mileage out of this beam. Everybody's buffed. Yeah, looks good. All right. I'm going to swap the waller in now. And I'm going to place some funky looking walls here, but they are going to get the job done. You'll see what I mean. It might not look like it at first, but uh, you'll have to trust me. You'll see it during the wave. So the first node of this wall is on the beam and it's inside the tower stack. And I'm going to stretch it out to about the middle right here. So what's going to happen is an ogre is going to come up this lane, walk over, slap this wall a few times, not going to hit the crystal, and he's going to go down to the DSTs. That is the idea, and we've got one. So that's a 5DU wall, one more. It's a 4DU wall here next, and same idea right inside the tower stack, the first node, and stretch it on over to here, and just going to line it up with that bastard more or less, a 4DU wall. Just going to double check and make sure we've got armor on both, and we do. All right, now there is some trash coming up here as well, but we'll drop a gas trap stop them they usually stop to admire the wall also so it's not really a big deal same deal over here gas trap okay and then one more wall on this side uh, a 2d wall just in case these walls don't really take any damage but if you die or something goes wrong maybe you step off of uh what you're boosting with a striking gemstone that's spoiler alert we're boosting stuff with a striking gemstone the wall can be handy speaking of which some stuff shall be dropped so an inferno trap Going down, I'm going to drop them in front of this rock. We're going to hang out over here. The uh, Inferno going down first and an aura stack, quote unquote. I'm going to drop first the electric aura, then the ensnare, and then a strength drain. You'll see why it's just easier to find them 
in midair. They're kind of going in descending order here. So here's the idea. Here's the plan. Uh, you know, not everyone's going to have a Waller or Builder Squire, but hopefully you've at least got an Attack Squire that's geared. We're going to drop a Bouncer. So what can happen is you're going to hang out here and boost this stuff with a Striking Gemstone, but you're kind of a sitting duck for Dark Elves. So to help with that, we're going to drop a Bouncer and we're going to sit on top of that and uh, boost everything from here. So I'm going to drop it on this rock, but a little bit closer to the DST stack. So we can sit here, tower boost, it'll hit the towers and boost everything down there with the striking gemstone. The only issue now is we kind of become a target for the ogres coming out of the spawn doors. They're gonna see you and say, looks good, I'm gonna throw my cobalt at that guy. And uh, we wanna block that. So here is a 1D reflect wall going down here. That'll be nice for that spawn door and this spawn door and one more starting on this banister here coming across a 1d reflect gonna stop anything coming from that spawn door so you'll see kobolds bouncing off of these during the run if you give it a shot and uh, that'll do it for up here so next up i'm gonna drop some stuff down at the bottom uh a wall here this wall might not take any damage but it'll prevent some shenanigans that you could have happened down here i have had weird stuff happen down here where this crystal just randomly pops um yeah you want this wall here so i'm gonna drop that 5du wall and then a 4du buff beam here and i'll do a 3du wall to plug up this hole everything's on the beam so it's got armor just double checking here it looks good a couple levels on this beam now they're close to the armor cap great and we're going to do a couple traps down here too with this last 60u i'm going to drop a gas trap make sure it hits the beam there but i want it to be over this side mostly to uh make sure that it gets triggered some enemies are going to come down this hallway they'll trigger it and the range on the gas is not only going to hit this lane but it's also going to hit this lane as well and then we'll have a darkness too which has insane range also and uh, everything is going to get hit by this darkness and gas combo cc'd up blinded and stunned that looks good so even if these walls don't take any damage i would caution you against getting rid of them they are at least from what i can understand preventing something bad happening i haven't had any issues since i started using the walls just like that so i'm going to max this beam out here and we've got plenty of mana to play with now i'm going to do four level ups on the inferno and four on the electric aura. They'll be killing most of the trash for us. And then a few on the strength drain. You'll have to probably upgrade that mid wave. So we're going to swap in a boost monk here with a striking gemstone. Just going to double check. That is a striking. Okay. The rest of this mana can go evenly into the tower stack. Why not? These DSTs, fusion DSTs, are going to tear up these ogres. It's going to be easy, easy pickings. Okay. I always start my waves off these days with an apprentice boost, so that's what I'm going to do. Overdrive, swap over to the boost monk, drop my tower boost, and then I'm going to sit here on my bouncer on this side of the bouncer to try to distract the uh, dark elves away from my DST stack. Sometimes the DSTs take a bit of cleave damage, and uh, I really don't want that to happen, so I'm going to hang out on this side of my bouncer. Now, you may be wondering, are my auras actually boosted? The easy way to check is to look at this building here. If you see the lines from your auras on that building, you'll know they're boosted. That's how I check. And uh, this is the run. I stand here, any dark elves that come over, I shoot them or the DST shoot them. The bouncer kind of prevents them from getting to me. If you're not on the bouncer, they all swarm you, they beat on you, you lose your uh, ability mana, you can't boost. It's not a good time, so I do recommend using the bouncer any bouncer will do nothing special about this one it's from my attack squire but that's the run we're already halfway through the wave that's all i do i hang out on the bouncer and i boost my towers you uh may need to repair the strength train mid wave but another nice thing about the bouncer is you've got vision on all the lanes from here so there's an advantage there you can repair most things from here your dsts this wall you could probably get to that wall too if you jump over but that's the plan we've got an ogre here he was distracted by the wall and went down to the DST, so that is the run. Anything noteworthy that might happen, I'll cut to that, but otherwise, I'll see you at the end. All right, that'll do it for the promenade. Just to take a look here, I didn't repair anything. I didn't upgrade anything. It's a pretty easy run. Um, in terms of upgrade priority, I would say, yeah, max out your Inferno and your Electric Aura since they're doing a lot of work, and then pump the rest of that mana 
into your DST stack, but not many things took damage and the things it did didn't take much. So 12.36K taken there. I didn't repair or upgrade any of the walls. That's how much damage this wall took here. I don't think that one got touched. No, that's not always gonna happen though. Sometimes these walls do take a bit of damage like this one here did, just a shot or two. Um, sometimes they'll take no damage. Sometimes they'll take some damage. There is an element of RNG here with the way ogres spawn and which enemies Jin decide to boost and all that, which what's rifted. I don't know what's scripted and what's random, but there is a bit of RNG involved. Either way, it's a pretty smooth run. So let's pop the chest here and see what we got. Oh yeah, militia chest. So militia is probably the set I'll go for next. And here is my helmet. Eh, not great, but that's a guard helmet for you. 351 ups is not too bad maybe that's a good dps piece yeah it could be useful either way that's the helmet off to royal gardens for the chest gardens is sort of a classic gear farm it's definitely a hot spot it was uh the most prominent gear farm in 1.1 and it's probably still going to be that some to some degree in 1.2 all right let's start with a whole mess of towers on this bridge i'm sure that's going to surprise no one that's been here before so the way I look at this, this line here is the very middle of the bridge, at least horizontally or whatever you want to consider that, I guess, vertically, maybe. Um, and this line of uh, smaller square bricks here is the middle going this way, long ways. Let's call it that. So midline here, midline here. Those are my reference points. So for the first two DSTs, I'm going to line up on that midline come back to the other mid here and then go right behind that over a little bit and uh, two DSTs dead ahead straight on. And then I'm going to have two more going down right next to them. And I'm moving my character here and not the tower. I recommend that to lay down big tower stacks that are consistent and uniform. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to angle the left side of the aim just so it covers that lane there. And uh, I guess that third tall bush, lining it up with that is a good reference point too. Um, I'll do one more just like that. Next to it, same deal. Shooting down that lane, also a flyer lane over there. That's good coverage. And then we're gonna mirror that for the other side of the map as well. Now you're gonna drop a 60 U buff beam anyway. So packing them together side by side, super tight, not necessarily needed, but Packing them together, uh, at least in a straight line, is going to make it easier on you when you try to drop your buff beam to make sure they all get hit. So I do recommend being kind of meticulous and consistent in terms of placement. So there we go. And I'm going to have another two DSTs right in front, except uh, in front of this, this line of DSTs, except that these two are going to just face straight back. There's a copter lane back there and some ogres coming out. So we'll want some DSTs for those lanes as well. And next up, we'll do some flame bursts. So right next to the uh, other row of DSTs there, these two, we're gonna have a flame burst go down. I'm gonna make sure the right side of the aim for this one just lines up with that planter next to the bench. And then one more flame burst here. And I'm gonna make sure the left side of the aim on this one lines up down the lane. Same deal here, lines up down that lane, just like the DSTs were. And I'll mirror that on the other side as well. And uh, these will be doing most of the work clearing the trash and they, they do a good bit of damage. So they'll be doing some damage to ogres and stuff too. Flame Bursts put out quite a bit of damage between the splash and their direct hits. Same deal, I'm lining up with that planter. You couldn't really see it, but that's what I lined up with. And one more to mirror the other side as well. Hopefully we're all lined up clean and even. That's kind of the challenge for this build, making sure you're even and lined up well that way when you drop your beam everything actually hits it okay so we've got coverage galore here look at that that's what you want to see the whole map is covered and it's covered evenly all right let's see the moment of truth here i'm gonna start on this middle double brick row here if you want to call it that and i'll just stretch it all the way across Line it up, try to make it straight. You can look down your line of towers here just to see if we're even or not. All right, I think I'm good. Just gonna double check. Sometimes I don't nail this first try. So these DSTs are gonna tell us whether or not, yeah, all right, we're good. Yep, 
everybody's on. You might not get that the first time, just try it again, no sweat. All right, while we're here, I'm gonna drop an Aura Stack 2 on the little center line, not quite under the DSTs because we wanna be able to get to this right there. And Snare Electric and Strength Drain going down. We're gonna play another booster with a striking for this one as well. Okay, and while I'm over here, I'll swap to my Waller EV and drop the Reflects. We'll need some Reflects to bounce those Kobolds away. So I'll drop a 1D Reflect while here, kind of on the midline for the bridge. That'll work. I'm gonna angle it in just a little. That way, if you do get an Ogre in that side lane, he's gonna throw a Kobold at you. It'll bounce off of this. It'll offer a little bit of coverage. I've got a flame burst poking through a little bit there. Not recommended, but I'm not gonna bother fixing it. Hope that doesn't trigger anybody. One more going down here. One DU. Beautiful. Okay, and I'll, I'll drop one on the back too. You get cobalts flying around all over the place for this one. So uh, reflect walls, highly recommended. Also, the spawns on this map are a little bit lopsided. This lane here has a lot of ranged enemies that come out you'll see mages and archers what can happen is they can rush around be immune to your cc kind of round this corner and stand here and possibly get a shot off on your crystal we don't want that we also don't want mages standing here shooting the crystal either so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to drop a reflect wall starting here one du is going to be big enough and it'll end here that way anything that does come around if an archer comes around it's blocked a mage coming down this lane, also blocked, so we're good. We don't need one on the other side. The other side's got more kobolds and other stuff. Not the same. All right, so I'm going to drop also a 4DU wall down here. This one gets some ogre action, so we'll also drop a buff beam here. And we can do the old gas-darkness combo for the uh, stun and blind. That'll work. And then another wall here. This one really doesn't take any damage for me. So I started going with just a 3DU wall here, just closing the gap, really. I think that's all that's needed. This one, it, it may take zero damage for you, but I'm also going to drop a, uh, a gas and darkness here as well. And that'll complete the build. So we've got all of our mana left. I'll just, I'll max the beam out. Sure, why not? And then I'll swap it on over to my Boost Monk Striking Gem. Always double check the gem. There we go. Striking looks good. I'll drop a few levels on my Strength Drain. One, two, three. Uh, I'll max out the Electric Aura as well. And then the rest of this, I'll just evenly disperse into my Tower Stack. Sure. It's... Man, the double damage on these DSTs is crazy. It's not like having double the power. It's like having more than double the power. One day I'll break that math down. But anyway, I'm going to start off like I normally do. Overdrive, whopping on over to the Monk, dropping a boost. And I think it's better to be on the tower stack rather than down there. You're still going to get the boost on your auras. You can check by looking at... I usually just look at that house. If I see my auras lined on that house over there, you can see it off in the distance. That's my reference point for checking to make sure that my auras are boosted. But this is even smoother than the Promenade. This is the most action you get. Occasionally a Dark Elf will come over, hop around a little bit, and die to a DST. So that's basically the run here. Unless anything interesting happens, I'll see you at the end. Coming up on the end here, there's an example of a kobold that got chucked at me, but because these were angled a little bit, I think it helped. I'm not really sure if it would have hit me or not if they weren't angled, but just at the end, some flyers coming in and the uh, last ogre straggling on in, but that's the victory. I didn't collect mana or upgrade anything mid-wave. All of my DSTs and stuff are still level 1, but the upgrade priority would absolutely be your tower stack. I did pop down and drop one quick upgrade on this. It was at 3 quarters health. Total damage taken, 105k. Not too bad. The other wall, it doesn't look like it took much damage. Yeah, let's see it. 9,240. Okay. So yeah, not a lot of damage to the walls here for this build. But going to pop the chest. And we've got a minor helmet here. And our chest. So there's our chest acquired. Off to Tornado Highlands for our boots.
This map is not a fan favorite. A lot of people didn't spend time here at 1.1 and uh, that's because it's not really an efficient farm. It's a super long run, even rifted. There's a ton of enemies. Yeah, 1791, kind of a lot, kind of a lot. So I'm gonna start with some DSTs on this little floating platform here. Floating platform, eh, it's on a rock. Uh, I'm gonna split that little circle platform over there in half with the left side of that aim. And uh, same thing for another DST kind of right next to it. Split that circle platform in half. That looks good. And for a couple more DSTs, I'm going to, with the right side of the aim here, I'm just going to cover that spawn door kind of in the middle of the screen there. Cover that spawn door with the right side of the aim. One more. Same deal. You don't really have to be as neat with these. Only four DSTs over here. And then I'm going to drop a uh, flame burst right there the left side of the aim i'm gonna have kind of aimed between that wooden pillar banner banister thing with the rope tied to it and the crystal that's gonna help kill some of the trash in that lane i'm gonna swap over to a beam ev but first speedy gemstone okay speedy for this one not a striking not required you don't need the range for anything really all right a beam ev for a for do you buff beam gonna be plenty for these towers over here that looks good everyone's buffed right beautiful okay done with the beamer ev gonna swap over to whoops my waller for this one now gonna drop some walls and traps and some auras over here starting with the auras i'm gonna have right between the crystals kind of on the ledge here i like an ensnare and an electric aura. And then I'm gonna swap over to the waller here and just plug up these holes. I'm gonna do a uh, three DU wall over here. And then I'll drop a four DU buff beam coming on over. And I'll do a four DU wall. Now this is just to, this is more to stop the enemies than it is to actually um, take damage. It'll just stop them in their path. It's gonna, it, this has a weird spawn pattern, this map. It's mostly gonna be goblins at the end. It's kind of odd. Uh, I'm gonna do a 2DU wall here and then a 4DU buff beam right here and then a 5DU wall. I think it's a 5DU wall, a big old wall stretched across. There we go just to stop them in the path. And then we'll do some traps. So some CC over here, a gas and darkness. It'll get triggered in this lane and stretch over to the other lane. But I'm going to have an inferno over here. That'll be that'll be good there. I'm going to swap this over to a 4DU wall. Actually, that'll be plenty. I do want that 1DU back. So my apologies, a 4DU wall for here is going to be fine because we're going to need some more traps here as well. I'll do a gas trap and a darkness trap, same principle. Triggered in this lane and effective for the other lane as well. And then an inferno trap, more of the enemy is gonna build up out here and I'm gonna drop that just so it barely touches the beam over there, just like that. So that way we've, we've got some fire damage in the lanes and then when they get closer, the electric core is gonna do some damage as well. And that flame burst is gonna contribute. There's just, there's so many trash enemies that it's, uh, it's a priority to focus on doing some damage to them and not solely DSTing it up for copters and stuff. Four is going to be plenty. So I hit a couple levels on the uh, buff beams. I'll do a couple on the Infernos and the Electric Aura just to help out and burn down some of these enemies a little more quickly. But that's going to do it here. Going to swap over to my Boost Monk and uh, run it with the same game plan as before. Just double checking that I've got. Yep, my Speedy is on. And the rest of this mana can go in to our buff beam and the DSTs evenly. We're uh, we're gonna have no problems with this map in terms of copters and, and big enemies. Four is actually gonna be plenty. The speedy makes a big difference. So same plan here. Gonna overdrive and swap over to the boost monk, G it up and tower boost. Now you can see 1,791 enemies. It's a pretty long run. You know, I was a little concerned at first about not having a reflect over here. Never wound up being an issue for me. We do have some dark elves jump. Yeah, that one just jumped to his death. But uh, sometimes they do 
make the gap, make the jump, but then a DST ends up hitting them anyway. So yeah, that might be a thing. It might not be a thing, but four DSTs on a speedy with is plenty. Without a striking, you don't need it. There is a copter lane dead ahead. Uh, the copters come in, they get taken out. They drop their ogre. Sometimes it hits the map. Sometimes it doesn't. If it does though, the ogre, it dies so fast because uh, the speedy, the four of them all targeting it, it's just too much. But um, that's Tornado Valley for you, or Tornado Highlands. I always mix them up. That's Tornado Highlands for you. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna cut it here because seriously, it's kind of a dull run. It's just long. You know, there, uh, there may be room for optimization here. You could maybe cut the walls and throw some more damage into the lanes if you want. Give it a shot and let me know if you if you further optimize the build. But I feel this is a combination of safe and it's got some damage in the lanes to speed some things up. But yeah, that's Tornado Highlands. I'm going to cut it to the end from here. Okay, finally coming up on the end here. I made some changes to try to speed it up. Here's the buildup I was talking about. Just a whole glob of enemies that come in over here at the very end. But here's what I did. I got rid of the aura stack that was here and I made this wall a little shorter and that wall a little shorter took them both off the buff beam because they don't take damage anyway really that's not much damage that's one wave of damage right there for that wall and uh, what I did with that extra DU was I put an electric aura right here to hit this whole bend coming around and another electric aura over here on this little platform can't really see the plate there it is and uh just so it would hit all of this area in an effort to speed this up this one's more about how long is this going to take you know and then i uh, i also dropped damage beams over here instead of the uh wall or buff beams i guess one of the walls could have been on a beam probably this one if you're gonna have one of the walls on the beam, probably better to make it that one. But uh, that's what I did to try to speed it up. It's a long run. This was a 22 minute run with a bit of running around to change things around mid uh, mid build there, or mid run. But there's our boots uh, missing a defense rate roll. Not too bad, 327. Also an ancient helmet from here. So that is Tornado Highlands for you. Kind of a long run, but boots acquired off to get the last piece, the gloves from the ancient mines. I did just cover this in both the primitive farming guide and a speed build for this. So I'll do something in between. This will be a quick little piece here. I'm sure you don't need to know any other builds for this map by now. But uh, now that we've got fusion DSTs, they can dominate the battlefield and make this run quite a bit quicker. So I'm going to do something similar to the speed build here. Start with some DSTs tucked into this corner. One tick over that way for this one just a bit of a spin to help out the rest of these can be straight on they do have adequate coverage of the map just dead ahead like that and I'll, I'll do a couple more just this is a lot like the uh this is a lot like the speed build pretty much except i'll do something a little different in the lanes to make it a bit more traditional looks great and a flame burst because why not? But the flame burst, I'll do just, I'll do it straight ahead. There are so many builds that are viable here. You could probably throw something together with end game stats. You're, uh, you're going to be looking pretty good. I'm not going to bother trying to fit a 4D beam on all this stuff. Everybody's buffed, right? Fun fact, in my speed build video, these two DSTs weren't buffed. Nobody said anything. Yes, everybody either didn't notice or was trying to be nice. Uh, one, one reflect is going to be plenty for this stack here that looks great so you know i'll uh i'll make it more of a traditional build for this go around i'll throw a couple of walls in here let's do a 40 u wall ought to do it and 3d wall over here should be plenty and i guess we'll do let's just throw some darkness traps in the lanes we want the enemies to come in so they can die quicker and then uh i've got eight du left how appropriate for an ensnare and an electric aura they are gonna hit the buff beam that looks great i'll just max out the beam and i guess the electric aura could use some love sure the rest of this can go into the towers Snow no big deal just 
chuck it on in there. Great. Yep, totally. And then I'll swap in Speedy Booster. Jeet up and go. All right, Ancient Minds is Ancient Minds. See you at the end. So the nice thing about having walls here is that none of the Dark Elves actually made it to me. They all got tripped up on the walls, neither of which took any damage. Okay, well, there's another build that works for the Ancient Minds. And we've got ourselves not only a Primitive Helmet, but some Guard Gloves as well. Looks like, eh, well, there you have it. <laughs> no uh, power roll on those, but... That is our full set of guards. Still a pretty quick run, I guess. Back to the tavern. Okay, there is our full set of guard acquired. I think next up, I'll go hunt down some militia for the next video. But that's going to do it for this one. Let me know how you go with the builds. And thank you so much for watching.